All right, we're joined now by Dr. Cyan Proctor. Uh, doctor, tell us, what is your level of excitement right now with the uh, upcoming mission? Uh, I'm so excited, I can barely contain myself. <laughs> I can imagine. Tell us what you'll be doing, how uh, you were selected for this. Kind of walk us through the process. So about six months ago, a call went out for people to enter contest to go to space as a crew member for the Inspiration4 team. And uh, there was this opportunity to show your entrepreneurial spirit by creating a shift for shop and with something that you could sell and then creating a two minute and 20 second Twitter video. And last year during COVID, I became a space artist. And so I thought, oh, this is a good opportunity for me to potentially win a trip to space. And so I created my shop called My Space to Inspire and where I sell my artwork that you can see some of it behind me. And I created a video where I did an original poem. And so I put it on Twitter and a week later after uh, it closed, I found out that I had won. And now I'm going to space. This all seems so unreal. Obviously, you put a lot of work into this, and you've got uh, a lot of the skills that they're looking for. Tell us what your trip will be like, how long you'll be in orbit, what that's going to be like for you. We are going to blast off on September 15th, as long as the weather down at Kennedy Space Center is looking good, and we will be in orbit for three days. And during that time, we're going to be doing some uh, medical experiments, or we're going to be uh, doing some photography and uh, some personal things that we want to do. And so for me, one of the things that I'm excited about is that I'm a community college professor at South Mountain Community College, part of the Maricopa Community College District. And so I'm bringing student art and poetry to space. And so I'm excited to bring that. Wow, this is just so amazing. What kinds of uh, preparation do you have to do for a trip like this in terms of the, the physical aspects of being in orbit? Oh, there's a lot of training. So for the last five months, it's been go, go, go. Um, since I found out, I am the mission pilot. I have my pilot's license. Uh, and so that means that I will be backing up my commander, Jared Isaacman, and he's also a pilot. And so my job is to really make sure that uh, the Dragon is on course, and then if any contingencies come up, uh, me and my commander will be able, we've been trained to be able to handle that. And the way we got trained is through going to SpaceX and being in the simulator, going through all kinds of uh, learning materials about the Dragon spacecraft and the Falcon 9 rocket. And, but then in addition to that, we've had a lot of other trainings such as fighter jet training and centrifuge training and zero G flight. Um, we've also done things like crew cohesion. We hiked Mount Rainier together in pretty much blizzard conditions, whiteout conditions, not blizzard, but whiteout where you couldn't see more than 50 feet in front of you. And, and that those things are the things that help bond you as a crew, but also they help build your resiliency. And, you know, as my commander say, says, uh, get uncomfortable, get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yeah, obviously having that crew cohesion is so important when you're going to be in kind of a close quarters. You know, one thing that after the uh, NASA space program ended with the shuttles, a lot of people thought maybe that was it or it was going to take us so long to go back. But we really haven't taken that long of a time off. And now we're back and it seems like in a bigger way than even before. Oh, absolutely. Now that we have, um, you know, commercial space flight happening where everyday people have an opportunity to go up, uh, this is a big change than what we're used to. And so I'm so thankful that I, you know, got this opportunity. And just by, again, following uh, the space industry, learning that I had this opportunity and then taking the time to apply. And now, you know, I'm blasting off. Well, your students obviously must be so proud of you and excited for you. What will this do for you as a professor when you get back? How is this going to help you uh, teaching your students in the future after this experience? 
Well, you know, I've been a geoscience professor for over 20 years now, and I teach classes like geology, physical geology, geologic disasters and the environment, sustainable cities, sustainable world, uh, planetary geology. And so you can imagine going to space on a SpaceX rocket and living in that dragon capsule with this beautiful cupola that I will be able to look back on the earth from and see you know, these processes in action, you know, getting that big overview effect and being able to come back and share that with my students um, to inspire them to think about how they can use their unique passions and strengths to, to go out and do amazing things. Well, Dr. Cyan Proctor, thank you so much for joining us and explaining more about the journey that you're about to go on. And we hope to talk to you when you get back to tell us what it was like. I would love that. And we have Netflix um, has been embedded with us along with Time. We're on the cover of Time magazine right now on newsstands. And uh, Netflix, the first two part series drops on September 6th. And then the next two uh, parts of the series are September 13th. And then, of course, when we come back from space, the last episode will air. So I hope people will tune in. We look forward to seeing that. Thank you so much for taking the time and we wish you the best of luck. Thank you.